Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Dawah Yash Shahar Market TV. Today we are at the Toronto Police Headquarters. We are covering a group of community leaders and a group of mothers that have been affected by gun violence. In particular, the Somali Canadian community that has gathered together today to collaborate and talk to the police to come up with solutions in order to have safer, safer neighborhoods and save our youth. This group of mothers have been collaborating and collecting for the past several years. They are having a more formal table to come together to come up with solutions. Some of them have experienced, um, they have lost a child for gun violence. Others have kids that have been incarcerated or that have been criminalized or that have been in jail. Today we're going to cover all that and have some interviews with some of the mothers that have been impacted directly by gun violence and families from the people and the victims of gun violence. Also, the uh, community leaders that are here today that have gathered this table and that has initiated Toronto Police to take that initiative and to open their doors to have this kind of discussion and open dialogue in order to save the youth. Stay tuned. This was five years and can you tell us why you started with your sons? Um, because I felt it like um, sometimes it's a Canadian system is not working together and that's what we wanted to find out how we can work together and did you have a son yes it's my son he was killed in violence when was that uh, 19 uh, 2015 uh, August 26 but the violence is start for August 17th um, and what happened to your son uh, my son is killed for race uh, the racism, so that's why it's my son is died, because he's black and the person who killed is a white male. Can you tell us a little bit about your son? What was he like? Oh, my son, he's a, he's a awesome. He's a he's a bubbly. He he have a future for this life, uh, this country. He born in Canada, and uh, he died in Canada, and he's a Canadian. And how old was he? He was a 25 years old. And what, what, what was, was his name? name? His name is Hussein Mahmoud. And you said what day was he? He was shot and killed, right? He was, uh, he was a violent killed. He hid in his, his, his head, so, and he's, uh, he controlled his, uh, his, uh, his, he controlled it, and he died for brain injury. What was your name? Can you My name is Shamso Elmi, Shamso, S-H-A-M-S-O, last name E-L-M-I. Now, can you just take us through what brings you here today to the Police Services Board meeting and, and, and why all of these mothers are coming together? Um, first of all, um, we try to find out the solutions. Why is our boys was killed? Why our boys is in the violence? Why is our boys it's like a, being dead for every week, every weekend? Why is that? So the question it is a lot of mothers and a lot of families who are asking these questions. It's not the child who died. It's not only him he died. His whole family, whole community died with him. So that's why it's like we have to sit down together as a mothers and find out what's the solution is going to come out. So we invited for a lot of different uh, uh, MPs and MPPs and to sit down and find a solution, how we can stop for these, uh, you know, nonsense things. It's like uh, it's killing and killing each other for our children. What would you like to hear from the police board today? Uh, not yet. We didn't went yet, but... Uh, what, you, what are you hoping that will happen? Oh, we'll have um, to have to work together. To work together How? and to, you know, because of a lot of, lot of our community, they are afraid for the police. How we can solve for this together? So how we can make easier for our community to make it easier to work together? So the police, it doesn't have to be, you know, uh, alien to them. And uh, the police, they have to be alien to us. So it's how, like a, how we can make together, how we can uh, solve this, you know, issue together. And do you have some solutions that you hope to share with the police today? Yes, it's um, 
it's not the only one solution we found it. It's like a, it's a lot of solution. But that's uh, one thing. It's, um, first of all, I have to thank um, Medenta and Somali Immigrant Aid. They given to us a really it's a safe space for mothers who can uh, uh, um, do for their debating for what's good for our community and what's bad for our community and how we can work together. So is the solution, it is not easy to find, but is that we will try. This is maybe is a solution, how we can work together. And can you just talk about what has made uh, sort of the anger and frustration and, and, and sort of how it's boiled over. You say that there is a crisis that's gone unrecognized. It, it is a crisis, it's not recognized because of uh, one of um, my son, when he passed away. It's my boys, they wanted to do revenge. So that's the things we wanted to stop. This is anger, this is the things, it's like a, we wanted to solve like a legal you know, just a system. We came here to this country for peace and justice, and that's what we are looking for. It, and still, we are looking for peace and justice and equality too. So we wanted to be equal to you and me and me and you and you and you. So that's what we wanted to be equal to each other. And how long has this group been needing to discuss this? Uh, it was uh, four years, and it's, so we are coming for a six o'clock in the morning. So because it's time for a kids who's sleeping, and times at that time is a quiet time. So at least the, we are the all is a mothers. We have a small children and we have our older children. So we wanted that's a time is that that was our peace time. So we can talk and we can uh, debating. And how many mothers are in this group? Our mothers, it's uh, almost like a, it's a 40, 40 mothers. 40 mothers. Yeah, who coming for every Saturday morning. So when you started this group and all these 40 mothers lost their sons to violence? Yes. To gun violence? The gun violence. And so, I mean, just describe what it's like to know 40 women who have lost their sons to gun violence. Uh, if, if, even, even though is that was a gun violence, it is they wanted to find a solution. Even though they have a anger, if they wanted, you know, they have it in a pain, but still they're looking for how they can have a peace. And this is our mother, uh, she's uh, one of the, our supporters. Yeah, hi, my name is Halima, and I'm here to support and, and the Somali mothers mending the crack in the sky program. And they're really doing an amazing job. And despite that, they don't understand and the legal system and all the rules and regulations in Canada. Mm -hmm. But every Saturday they come and they try to find solutions to, to solve the problems and the difficulties we're facing as mothers, as black women, as Muslim, Muslim women. Mm -hmm. so there are so many things, so many difficulties we have. And they're really doing amazing jobs and they are here to partnership with, and with the police force and they want and to work with them and they want also to have their voice to be heard. So that's why we are here today and we're hoping that and like this meeting, and we get progress in our community. We you, make our neighborhood more safer. What do you believe is the solution, or solutions? It's not only one solution. It's that's what we are looking for. All of us, we ha you have to bring a solution. And that's why we are open for everybody to come and to make, you know, whatever it feels like a solution. And that's why it's a police, we come because that's a one of the solution because they are the, com they are the one who's come first. One is a gun violence, one is a, you know, the justice, because they are the, they are lawmakers, okay. the law carrier. Yes, so, yeah. and the solutions, and the way we see it, first we have to help ourselves. We mm -hmm. try our best to mm -hmm. meet as a community and to find solution for all these problems. If we can do it alone, and it will be great, but it's really, we cannot do it by ourselves. So these mothers, whenever there is crisis in one of the neighborhood, like if one of the mother uh, lose her uh, son to, due to the violence, what they do, they go, they consult her, they help her, they, they, they give her, and all the grieving process, and they share with her the stories that they went uh, uh, themselves. One, one through, yeah. Yeah, so. and yes, and and also like uh, what they do, we do workshops for the mothers, 
and we do workshops for the youth themselves. So we're doing a lot of things. And group of us also, what we did, we established also a community school, private school. So we can, these boys, we can put them in one place and try to teach them to be a better Canadian, a better citizen. And when we are afraid that they become drop out of, uh, um, of high school, for example, what we do, all the mothers and also the members of the community, we come together and we do workshops for them and we teach them and we try to solve the problems. But it's bigger than us. Do you it's feel like the people who, who run the police and who are in charge, do they take you and your, your demands seriously? I think, I think this is our first deputation as a community and, and police force, they are part of our community as well and they are here to help us and to protect the communities. So we hope that they take us seriously and they help us because we want to work with them. We want to solve these problems. And I think that's what policing is. Okay? To, to follow up on, you know, you were saying it has to be a collaborative solutions, yeah. plural, but I mean, it would have the handgun ban that's been often talked about for Canada, yeah. at least for Toronto, would that at least be a good place to start? Definitely, yeah. yes, definitely. If there is no guns, then we have a safer city. Yeah. So you're not happy with the community policing as, as it is in your neighborhood? It's not, it's not like a, we are not happy, but it's because the police who's coming is they have a new face. And that's what we don't want it. It's we want it for a, the, the policing of a neighborhood. That's a policing we know. So that's what we're asking for the board today. The policing of neighborhood, that's a police we have to know and we have to be uh, comfortable. So the same ones all the time? Yeah, same one for all the time. So just to confirm, are most of the mothers in this group have lost a child to specifically gun violence or all of the mothers? Uh, there is about 200 Somali mothers in the city of Toronto. Toronto. And I hope I'm not exaggerating, but I think like about 200 families, they lost their kids due to violence. And the rest, we are all related and we are all affected. And we are all supporting them. Yeah. How does this affect the whole community as a whole to hear the news since 2005 until today? And Shamsi, you lost your child 2015 and it has been nonstop. I've seen you in meetings and stuff. How do you feel? How do you think this impacts as mothers and as the whole family? See, that this is the things it is. Um, it's like a, almost like a 15, 10 years is this is not stopping for this violence. And this is the things we wanted to be stopped. It's, like a, it's not a, like a one year or two years. It's a 10 years is going on for this issue. So this, for my child, Hussein Mahmoud, it's not only my child. It's a child for all my community. And this is the whole, this is the, their boys. So this is the, it's not only me who lost the kids. It's a whole community lost for their kids. And that's why we are grieving for this issue. And that's not, you know, uh, and it's no support system for these grieving things it's going to be on. So this is the, what we are looking for. What How kind of feedback did you get from the youth? Sorry. Uh, did, do they feel like their life matters? Do people care about solving these issues? And that's the things. It's like a, today, it's like a, when we are meeting, it's like a, when we are sitting to the youth, they felt like a, it's no matter. And that's why it's like we are telling, you know, it matters to you, to me, to all community. But that's what they felt. It's like a, their life is not matter. And it's nobody is listening to them for what they're saying. And that's why it's like a, we are the mothers. It's like a, the whole family. That's what we wanted to stand up. And we feel in our community we are in crisis. And, and everybody's losing hope, honestly. And the youth themselves, the mothers, and we feel that the real devastation because even our families back home we we every time whenever whenever we, like our family call us we we hearing bad news from back home and then here the first thing we do in the morning before even brush to brush our teeth what we do we check the news and it, like we feeling that we are depressed we are um, we don't have any hope we don't have any solutions, and that's why we meet, and that's why we know we don't have that much time left for us. Mm -hmm. We are old, lady, old ladies now, and these kids, tomorrow, 
they don't have anybody else. So we, will, we want to change. We want to change this. We want a positive change. We want our kids to grow up to be respected Canadian. That's all what we're asking for. Uh, that's all what we're asking uh, for. And I'm sure all the mothers in, in Canada, that's what they wish for. So this is the only thing we, we, we're hoping for. This is our wish. This is our really wish. It's a, one thing I will leave it for this. It is like a, when I came to Canada, 1987, I chose the Canada. Canada didn't choose me. Ontario, I chose that Ontario, but Ontario didn't choose me. I didn't choose to die my son. And I, all children who's dying, they are Canadian. They are, not only, uh, they are not only Somali, they are Canadian. They are taxpayers. They will be a taxpayers. And this is the thing, it's like a, it's a really crisis. So that was a brief interview with the mothers, with Shamsa Ilmi and Halima Avan, uh, one of the mothers that started this table four years ago in order to talk about gun violence and the impact that it has on the Somali Canadian youth. A lot of these mothers unfortunately lost their children. Some of these mothers have children that are incarcerated, that are in the jail system and stuff like that. So uh, this is extremely it's impacting the community as a whole. And today we are at the Toronto Police Headquarters at the board meeting trying to, trying to come up with solutions to fix these issues. And now we are hoping to hear from board members and the Toronto Police themselves, uh, including uh, the Mayor John Tory, to come up with solutions together and to hear the mothers themselves that have been impacted directly by these issues about solutions that they came up with together from those tables four years ago. To go ahead and thank you for joining us with our attention. Yeah. My name is Shamsa Elmi. I'm a daughter, I'm a mother. I'm a taxi payer and I'm a community member. I'm here today to share my story. My story is racism killed my son. And because of race, his, made, his murder has not been made clear to me. No one has communicated to me about my son's murder. In a hospital, I experienced systemic barrier due to our race and immigration status. The hospital staff made it clear to us that they were not able to identify my son's his, uh, uh, in, in their health care system. I was confused and I asked question myself if my son's death was due to receive an inadequate health care or if death to be to, to the injury. I felt that I was not supported, that there was no system in place to support people like me and my son. Our youth have a difficult accessibility support in the community. My son was previously in custody and committed crime that were very light in nature. However, when my son was murdered, he kill, uh, the killer did not face any charge and was not even held in custody. Why this, did it happen? When I asked police, they said young white male had no criminal record, so no charge will be laid again. I asked why he allowed to kill my son. Most crime, most uh, most crime committed by youth are not serious enough to face in the incarceration. However, where youth face more severe punishment, this is often due to race. The main problem I uh, I wish to bring forward is that there are, there are many youth that are like my son. Each youth has a story and struggle. I went to mention to GAP is our support system. For example, youth have been in conflict with each other, are sent to the same uh, youth correction service. They are then more likely to engage in conflict. There are one too many youth injured and murdered in situations like this. Legal aid does not cover enough funds to support uh, trouble youth. Lawyers charge a lot of money which legally it does not cover. When my son, Hussein Mahmoud, first got in trouble with the law, he went to the law I went to the lawyer who I paid. He was 
The same lawyer who told me my son to simply plead guilty and he will, uh, he will get a life sentence. My son listened and even though he was not guilty. At the end, he did not get a life sentence. The lawyer misled me and my son and provided us a false information. He took the advantage, Hussein and myself, because he knew we did not understand the Canadian system. So, what is our role in preventing these uh, incidents so no more youth could be killed? What plan is in place from uh, our justice system? We want the peace, justice, and equality in our service and better treatment to our youth and community. We want a justice system that aim to understand the circumstance to lead to our to our youth criminal action. A justice system that take a more op uh, optimistic approach in dealing with youth and, de uh, and their families. Racism killed my son. He is not only only one to be murdered to this race. We need to work together to end the endless suffering for families.
this group, MCIS, talks about transparency, transparency scorecard. And, you know, I don't want anyone like getting their hopes up and leading them on. I just want to point out that a former regular speaker at these board meetings, Dion Rene, became so disgusted and distrusted this board that it was acting in the public's interest so much that she, at the beginning of the year, took this board to court. So just something for everyone to keep in mind. Um, and also in the interest of transparency, uh, since they want to understand more about how these board meetings go, um, I just want to point out, uh, you're not actually even supposed to be here, Chair Pringle. That's right. Yeah. That's right. It even says on the City of Toronto's own website, the Chair Andrew Pringle's appointment end date on this board ended on November 30th, 2018. Question. What? It, it was July, uh, July 2019. So it, I just want to point out this board doesn't even follow its own rules. Exactly. So, I mean, I'm glad that more people came out because two months ago only four people came out to this board meeting. But if any of you are thinking that you're going to find cooperation and building trust and transparency, I you know, I'm sorry to be the one to break it to you, but that is not going to happen. This is a shady, corrupt board exactly. and where nothing has ever changed. That's true. So in this report, it also says MCIS has been generously supported by board member Ken Jeffers, who has volunteered his time to support the team to better understand the process of completing a police deputation. Well, as we've all found out recently, the most important rule in the board's bylaws to read regarding these meetings and giving a deputation is Rule 17.6, which says, upon the completion of a deputation to the board, any discourse between members and the persons making the deputation will be limited to members asking questions for clarification for up to five minutes. Members of the board will not enter into debate with the person making the deputation. Again, this rule pertains to what happens upon the completion of a deputation to this board. However, when you, if these people are probably think in the interest of transparency that if they come here in the future that they'll be able to ask you questions to find out how things work. Except as we know from the past, you will be blatantly lied to and told that you can't because 17.6 says so. Except 17.6 applies to what happens upon the completion of a deputation to the board. Another reason not to trust this board. So again, with Dion Renee's uh, going to court, you know, Chair Pringle, that um, Justice Kavanaugh admitted my affidavit into the record. And one of the things uh, I put into my affidavit was uh, this meme here from the city of Toronto. Councilor Mamalidi at the time got into it with the lawyer. Uh, paragraph 22, I said in, in the Dion Ray affidavit, uh, said, in regards to the chair telling people who speak at Toronto Police Services board meetings that they have to stick to the topic, they can't go off topic. Below is a screenshot of what a City of Toronto lawyer at a Public Works and Infrastructure Committee meeting said to then Councilor Giorgio Mamalidi on what people who go to speak at those meetings can talk about, which was, and this is what the lawyer told then Councilor Mamalidi, whatever they basically want to say, whatever she, the lady was speaking at the time, whatever she wishes to speak to. Because the regulars who come here know that if you say something that this board doesn't like, they, again, they will also straight up lie to you and say that you have to stick to the topic when section 2B of the Constitution guarantees all of our freedom of expression. And Chair Amy Pringle took an oath to uphold that Constitution. And the very last line of it says, so help me God. And he routinely violates our freedom of expression at these meetings. And if you come here, you'll find out for yourself that he'll do it to you too. And if you really want to send your head for a spin, look up the definition for defi uh, deputation in the board's def definition section. I tried to find out recently by email, and um, Diana here was, was good enough to be transparent enough with me. You're not going to tell me which dictionary you guys got that definition for def uh, deputation because you're, you've invoked your solicitor client privilege. What's that got to do with, you can't tell me what definition, what dictionary you got that out of? Darren, because of solicitor client privilege? Derek, thank you very much. So much for your uh, uh, transparency. Any questions with Derek? Scott, there were some uh, things that were mentioned there about uh, Darren appointment. Do you want to 
Uh, well, then, well, there's a police officer over there. Is he doing to protect uh, you? Are you, Mr. Chair? I believe there's a question about your you arms. Right? Um, <laughs> City Council this week okay. uh, did make an appointment, but I can argue that uh, the appointment is not effective until the 30th of September of this year. Uh, as there's no effective appointment at this time, uh, you would retain your position as chair until the it's not true, That's not true, brother! If the funny don't get it, shut, shut it, it down. down! If the funny don't get it, shut, shut it down! down. We have asked for accountability for the officer, for all the officers who were involved in this crime against a young black boy, and two and a half years later, we are not given the time at this table. We are not given the space at this table. Hey, we wish you success in your struggle with your communities, but we are here to take another way today because after two and a half years, we are tired. It's been two and a half years. Two, two and a half, half years. years since the Toronto Police and Mark Saunders learned about this crime. Shame. Shame. Mark Saunders was the chief of police then and still is to this day. Mark Saunders is complicit in this cover in this cover up. It's been hundreds of years. Hundreds, hundreds of, of years. years. Hundreds of years, years since stolen black people were brought to this stolen land and denied the freedom to walk the streets and we still lack the freedom to walk the streets today. Shame. 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 And so we are gathered here today to repeat six demands. Demands that again were made two years ago now for a young man who lost an eye, who lost an eye, a black teenager as a result of a beating of a police officer. A police officer whose name has never been spoken at this table. Shame. 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 We would like to share those demands with you and again with the public today. An independent investigation into Durham Regional Police Services and Toronto Police Services that will uncover the extent to which frontline officers and administrative staff of both services colluded to cover up the assault on Devontae Miller. An apology from the Durham Regional and Toronto Police Services to Devontae Miller and his family. The firing of Michael Quiero from Toronto Police Services. The firing of Ma Michael Terrio from the Police Service. Monetary compensation for DeFonte Miller and his family. The firing of John Terrio from John Toronto Police Services for his role in covering up the assault his sons committed. And finally, overhaul of the Special Investigations Unit, which includes releasing the names of all police officers charged with uh, any crimes. Annual collection of public distribution of race-based disaggregated data. The public release of all SIU reports. And the adoption of the 2017 Independent Oversight Review recommendations. We repeat these demands today out of love and friendship for our friend DeFonte Miller. And again, for you mothers who are gathered here trying to find a way for your families and your communities, we have a crack in our hearts as well that we are trying to mend. And what you see today is the pain that we are trying to mend and to fight for this young man, for his family, and for all black people in this city yes. and across Canada. Yes, 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 yes. Justice! What do we say? Justice! What do we say? Justice! Justice! Justice. 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 You know, the funny don't get it? Justice. 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 What do we say? Here for Devante! What do we say? Here for Devante! Everything! 
That was the conclusion of the meeting today at Toronto Police Headquarters. It went very well in terms of giving time. The mothers were given time at the table that they have collectively put together four years ago in order to talk about the issues that impact them and the loss of their children. Not only do they lose children, they actually do suffer from this as an ongoing issue with the Canadian Somali community. The youth, are the, some of them are victims, some of them are also come from families who are victimized, such as their mothers, siblings. And here with me is to talk about her feeling and how everything went down is Halima Avan. Halima, welcome to Home Market TV. Uh, welcome. Thank you. Can you please tell me, um, it, took, it took you guys four years ago to collectively get together to get these recommendations and commands. How do you think today's meeting went? And first of all, it didn't take us four years. I think and the Somali mothers, they had meeting for a long time. Yes. And, but these four years, we became more organized. Mm -hmm. And we did our homework and we did research. And that's why we came to the police and deputation. And I think it went well. Okay. So the issues were being heard today. And uh, what are your hopes that after the police gets, got the recommendations that were suggested today and they have the presentation and all that, I understand that, of course, this was already done by, by the community in terms of uh, mothers reaching out to other mothers that are already going through these situations. But in terms of getting this is an, in an organized manner, what do you think? Did the conversation change? Did it impact the police force differently? And since this is our uh, first experience with the police de deputation, mm -hmm. and we will wait for the outcome, and we will hope that we, we, we find some change and from their side, and we move forward. That's, that's our uh, wish. Thank you so much, Halima. So our viewers at Hamarka TV, the mothers remain very helpful. Uh, this is uh, one of the first of the meetings that are being conducted here at the Toronto Police Headquarters. There has been a lot of emotions from the community. Some of the mothers were remembering the loss that happened. These boys did not die just from the mothers, they died from the whole community. And to come here today to be given a moment to actually express their feelings and the loss that they have been experiencing in terms of trauma and the impact that it did, it's a move that hopefully brings some change. And they remain helpful. Thank you so much for watching and have a wonderful day.